Well, let's move on to another because sure. I think I think uh, you've been uh, stadiumed enough the last yeah. the last couple of weeks. Uh, today, as a matter of fact, uh, finance ministers are uh, west. I think Bant for or uh, Kananaskis, right? Uh, talking about changes to Canadian pension plan that right. uh, Jim Flaherty is announcing. So, I wanted, right. what is our as a province? I understand there's Manitoba, uh, British Columbia, Newfoundland. Uh, there was four or five provinces, Six that, provinces. Signed, that signed an agreement yeah. or a letter that yeah, to him. British Columbia, Manitoba, Ontario, and the Atlantic provinces are generally supportive of an improvement to the Canada Pension Plan. We think a couple of other provinces are interested as well, but they want to see uh, how it goes. Basically, Manitoba's position is, is that you've got a lot of young people these days that are very mobile. Mm -hmm. They move to where the jobs are. And sometimes they're changing jobs every five, six, seven years, sometimes even more frequently than that. Yeah. And uh, what we're seeing is a lot of people are not putting aside the money for retirement because of their movement around and they're not locking into a pension plan that provides yeah. them with that as they go forward. The Canada Pension Plan is uh, in healthy shape. It's one of the largest investments in the country. It invests in uh, businesses, it invests in economic development all across the country and outside of the country as well. The Canada Pension Plan allows a working person to have a core pension no matter where they live or work throughout their lifetime. Right. So it's got a lot of mobility attached to it. It also has the advantage of all the administrations in place, all the investment uh, expertise is in place, so it doesn't require you to invent anything, it's all there already. So what is the best way to proceed? Well, we're just coming out of, uh, again, this great recession. There's a concern that we don't want to put any additional burden on business with additional payroll tax right now, or employees. So the position of Manitoba is, is that agree to it in principle and bring it in as the economy gets stronger, but get movement in a forward direction okay. to secure more pensions for people as they work throughout their lives and as they move around the country for opportunities. So by getting an agreement in principle now, we could phase it in when, say, the economy reaches, say, you know, 3% growth, we sort of recover, but it allows us to do the forward planning yeah. and get it in place. And uh, we think that that's a useful approach. It can complement other approaches, that are being suggested, such as having group investment plans or pension plans mm -hmm. offered by insurance companies. Because this, right now, the Canada Pension Plan only provides a small portion of what you need to retire. Right. Even by amping it up a little bit more, it's still going to provide no more than maybe 20, 25 percent of what you need to retire. But the, the general rule of thumb is, is that people should try to put aside around 70 percent of what they're earning during their working life as a retirement money. Most people live on quite a bit less than that. So if you could get that 20 to 25 percent with the Canada Pension Plan, if you can do your own personal savings on top of that, you probably can get yourself to 50, 60 percent of what you need uh, of your existing salary over your best years when you retire and have some security when you hit that age when you want to retire from the workforce. So, but now how would that then, I mean, you know, I have RRSPs and yeah. I contribute to that. Yeah. Why would I go to uh, the pension, like why? Canada Pension Plan, it's another tier. We, uh, we always look at pensions in terms of tiers. Uh, there's sort of a basic tier called old age security, right. which is available to everybody unless they're very high income earners and uh, then they don't get it because they get disqualified over a certain income level. There's a supplement to the old age security called the guaranteed income supplement for people that have no other form of uh, money available to retirement. The second tier is the Canada Pension Plan, which is really aimed at people that have worked most of their lives yeah. and it's really to protect middle class people. People between 30, 70, 30, 80 thousand dollars have the hardest time putting money aside because they're raising kids, they're paying mortgages yeah. and it's those people that this would protect the most. The low income people are kind of looked after right now. We could probably do more to help them as well uh, with the, you know. But there's it, a safety net there in place. There's a safety net in that place and it could be tweaked up. The Canada Pension Plan is really for working middle class families and a lot of them are not putting enough retirement money aside. So it would really help middle class families, which is what I support. There's more, uh, security and pensions for middle class families. It helps small business people. They can put the money there. They know it's going to be invested. They know the administration costs are already looked after. Mm -hmm. And then a third tier, which is what you can put aside yourself yeah. through your registered retired savings plan. And that goes probably up and down depending on how your business is doing and how the economy is doing and what, where, where you're at in your life cycle. If you're at the beginning of buying a new house, that might not be the year you contribute. If you're doing well there and you've got more money later on, you'll put it in. But it gives you a floor upon which you can build. Yeah. So that's the idea is to have the different layers that you can build on. Okay. So then as a province, provincially, we're, you're we supporting We generally it. support it because we think uh, Manitobans, uh, middle income families in Manitoba would benefit by having a, a higher floor for their retirements. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, we'll follow up more on that as it right. goes and, and talk about yeah. it in, in Marketplace Magazine. 
Uh, let's uh, switch gears again. Uh, we're sort of we're under a year to go uh, before we before there's another provincial election, um, and which will be your first as sort of running as premier. as premier. Um, what what uh, what is sort of the mid, I mean other than ongoing business for the rest right. of the year? Obviously, you've got it. You want to make a statement to Manitobans right. to say, you know, I, I belong in this position and I'm here to lead you for another four years or more. Yeah. What are sort of the major things? Uh, well, I gave a throw to the uh, a state of the province address last yes, week. Yes, and we got we and, have that. Uh, what's really important is is that we have a good forward plan for the province. A good forward plan based on a stronger economy, a more innovative economy, an economy that uh, uh, ensures that we do uh, research and development for new products and services. Some of the stuff you and I were talking about, some of the new software that can be out there, new media. Mm -hmm. All of these things are opportunities to grow. Tourism is another huge opportunity in Manitoba. Uh, there's a lot of people that want to come here to see our ecological, or our green assets, our forests, our lakes, which is why we're working on the UNESCO World Heritage Site on the east side. A lot of people come here for our cultural assets. We have some of the strongest performing cultural groups in the country. Yeah. Uh, Richard Florida, that uh, guru of cities, has said Manitoba with about 4% of the population, and Winnipeg with about 3% of the population, has 17% of the performing artists. You think of the Jazz Festival, the Fringe yeah. Festival, the Folk Festival, the Festival de Voyager, we have a lot of great assets here, so we want to build our tourism sector. Uh, we want to be able to take our clusters that are doing well, aerospace, buses, biotech. All of those areas have huge potential for further growth and job creation. Yeah. But they need educated people to do that. And that's another big part of what we're about, is strengthening our education system. You may have noticed that we're now going to require people to stay in school until they're 18. Yeah, which uh, I think is a... I, I think is a good thing, obviously. It is, because uh, if you've got to spend money on young people, it's better to spend it on educating them yeah. than dealing with other issues out there in the community. It's a good crime prevention as well. Uh, we're uh, continuing to strengthen our education at the post-secondary level, colleges and universities. And then right at the front end, we're investing heavily in young children and families to get off to a healthy start. Right from the time when the young child is born, they can have access to a home visitor or a nurse and then we want them to have good stimulation as a family, access to books and reading, and even access to schools, so sort of preschool programs, mm -hmm. and uh, opportunities in daycare to have learning in daycare, not just child minding. Right. So we're trying to make sure that all our investments and in families have good, strong components when they start out, to make sure that education is strong so that a young person can move. Right up when you hit around that grade nine or 10 area, area is when kids start deciding whether they want to continue or not. Yeah. If we can help them finish high school, through a variety of alternative programs if they're not fitting into the traditional one, whether it's a trade yeah, yeah. or a special skill. I've been out to a couple of schools lately, for example, uh, Tech Bach, where the young people are coming out of there as professional photographers now. You used to have to go to community college to do that or yeah. go into a special training. I was out at uh, Sister High School, which is our largest high school in Manitoba, 1,800 young people. They have a whole new media program there now where people can come out with special skills in designing uh, new apps. Yeah. Uh, new media products, using all the tools. It's like they can take 12 courses related to new media before they finish high school. And some of the young people there already got jobs fixing computers, doing yeah. some of that stuff that earns them 20 bucks an hour when you're in high school, which is pretty good when yeah. you think about it. Yeah. So we want school to be something that's more relevant to people, allows them to finish their programs, allows them to get skills that, allow them, that will encourage them to enter the labor market, and quite frankly allows them to have the skills where they can start up and generate their own businesses because in the future, small business is going to be, remain incredibly important to diversify our economy. We already are a very diverse economy with lots of good things going on, but the more we can encourage the small and medium-sized businesses uh, to grow, and that links to another piece of our future agenda, the trade agenda. Yeah. I've been over to China, Hong Kong, the Philippines, Israel. We see a lot of partnership opportunities there, and Manitoba is strength is small and medium-sized business. We've got some excellent large ones, but if we can get the small and medium-sized business sector into the export market, there's a chance for them to scale up what they do and to make more opportunities here in Manitoba. Yeah. For example, uh, when I was in China, Parker Hannafin, which is an electronics company in Winnipeg, supplies all the high-end electronics to this large-scale heavy equipment manufacturer. And what their product does is allow them to conserve fuel. You know when the big uh, yeah. front-end loader's idling? It shuts down the use of the uh, fuel. It might even shut it off. They save enough fuel in two years using the electronics that are made here to pay for the cost of the machine that they're buying. That's a huge plus for the environment. 
it's a huge plus for any business person buying that piece of equipment. And right? developed out of here. It's all developed out of here. And by having that relationship with that company in China, they've been able to grow their employees to around 200 people here. They were quite a bit smaller than that before. So, yeah. so these are the kinds of things we want, is partnerships that allow us to grow our economy and help our economy hooked into the whole world. Because we do know that the American economy is still pretty fragile. Uh, there's a lot of tipsiness there. And I think we'll be for the, a while. Uh, 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 the, the foreseeable, yeah. you know. And right now, you know, uh, most Canadian provinces have, you know, at least three quarters to 80% of what they do linked to the American marketplace. Yeah. So we have to develop a trade strategy which diversifies our markets into Asia, into Europe, into South America. All of those are opportunities for us through the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China. These are opportunities for us to grow our business and to diversify our ability to uh, provide good quality goods and services to the rest of the world and to encourage investment to come here, yeah. which is why we support Centerport. Centerport's gonna allow uh, the five major trucking companies we have, yeah. the three major railways we have, the new airport we're developing, all to synchronize opportunities for people to have business out of Winnipeg that can hook out to the rest of the world, east, west, north, and south, all the way down to South America, through the Midwest, United States, up over to Russia, over the top, and down into Asia. We'd like to see the government of Canada identify Manitoba as a gateway to North America, both in and out, but a mid-continent gateway. Right. right now, they have their gateways on the west coast. On the east coast, they're getting congested. Having a mid-continent gateway would provide another opportunity for uh, businesses to both enter and uh, export outside of Manitoba. Well, and I, and I think it, at a future uh, time, I'd like to talk more about about that, how the brick nations are, and how right. Port of Churchill, and which we, we, we've talked on before. So, yes. uh, just to wrap up, because I know you're very, uh, your schedule is very busy. Uh, this is sort of your opportunity to, uh, you know, Christmas is a week away. Right. If you've got a message for Manitobans right. uh, for the holidays, well, you know, Christmas is a time of the year when uh, people really relish and cherish the opportunity to spend time with their families. Uh, sometimes uh, the families can include their parents or their children, their friends, uh, people in their communities. And I just wish that Manitobans will have a, a great opportunity to spend time with their loved ones over Christmas, take a time to think about others that maybe aren't so fortunate, and just how fortunate we are, not only in Manitoba, but as a country, we really uh, live one of the best quality of lives in the world. Really? And we should never take that for granted. And you know, we think about the 156 Canadians which have given their lives in Afghanistan right now to protect our way of life, we might take a moment to think about them as well and the great sacrifice their families have made by having their uh, loved ones participate uh, to defend our freedoms uh, in that faraway place, but they defend yeah. our freedoms back home. So I wish everybody the best of the holiday season and look forward to uh, serving Manitobans in the new year. Very well said. Thank Premier you. Premier Selinger, thank, thank you, you very much for, and uh, for helping us to wrap up 2010. Great. I am Glenn Tinley with Winnipeg Men Magazine and Marketplace Magazine signing off for 2010 with our Premier Greg Selinger. We will see you in 2011.